Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. I've been doing a series of videos on the ESP32 and connecting it to Wi-Fi. In the last video, I had I used this XSTR text thing that I put up on the Nexion display, and I had some questions about it, so I decided to take a little break from that series and do this video on this command. I'm trying to do a video for every command in the Nexion. Now this video is only going to take place in the Nexion IDE. If you go back to the video before this, I use it to say scanning when I'm looking for networks, and then I override it to make it go away. For this video, it's going to be fairly simple. I'm going to have three buttons. I'm going to show something, and then I might show a little bit more, and then I'm going to hide. And then I just have this placeholder. I did this placeholder so that I would have an idea of, of the space that something takes up on the screen. Because when you do use the XSTR command, you have to know what you're going to, what size it's going to be, so you know the what area you're going to take up. If I click on this text here and I scroll down, you can see the X and Y positions and the height and the length or the width of the box. And so with this height and width, I can put the word placeholder in there. So that way when I send the X string or the XSTR up to it, I know that I'm going to need, if it's that many characters, I'm going to need a width of 175 and a height of at least 30. And we'll use this when we send the characters to the display. The XSTR command has a lot of values that, that make it work. I have them put vertically here, but when we put them in the command, they're horizontal. But I just thought it would be a little easier to go over them vertically here. And so the first one is the X position, and the next one's the Y. So it's the upper left-hand corner of where the text is going to start. And then you have a width and a height. If you have that width and height at zero, you won't see anything on the display. So the width and the height does have to fit the text. It doesn't auto format or anything. Then you select the font ID, which we're just going to use zero, the one that we have. And then you have the font color of the text itself. And then you have a background color that you can set differently. Or you can set it to the same color that the background is so it looks like it's just floating there. There's even a way to have no background. And then you've got the X center and Y center. And that's when you create that box with the width and the height. You can say, I want my text to be left or right in the box, and up or down, or in the middle. So if you select them both as one and one, the text is centered perfectly in the middle. You have this STA command. We use it for the values of the crop image, which I haven't had good luck using, but I have used one if it's set, and that just gives the background a solid color. Two is an image. When you use two as the STA value, then the background color has to be defined by the in image ID. So if you have multiple images loaded in your IDE, you can have different images be your background. And then three is no background or transparent. And this even works in the basic display, so it's kind of interesting. You can't normally have transparent things on the basic displays, except for in this case. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this show button to output the word testing on the display. And you use the XSTR, and then you can see in this um, tooltip down here that all of the different things you can enter. And since we've got that placeholder set at 125 and 125, we're going to do this just a little bit different, and we're going to set it at 110. So it'll be over 110 and down 110. And then we're going to have our width and height be 100 by 100. Now I'm going a little bit small on the width because I want to show you what happens to the text if it's too long. And then I only have one font in here, but you would so it'll be zero. And then we're going to make the color of the font red, and we're going to make the background blue. Then we're going to have the text all the way to the left and all the way to the top, so it would be zero, and then another zero. In this case, we'll follow that up with a one for a solid background color. 
and then we'll use the word testing. Now you have to be careful because all of the commas in here must be commas and I've done this a few times now and it never fails I get a period in there and then it won't compile and it says something about a variable error because it thinks you're trying to assign something to XSTR and you're not in a way you are I guess but it, it treats it funny if you have a comma in there or a period so if you do get an error on this the first thing I would do is make sure you have commas in every one of those spots now when I hit show you can see that it pops up. So we have our blue background, our red text, and you can see that I made it too small, but I made it long, so it wraps around. So you do get the letters. It does try to figure things out, but it's better if, the, if you just take the time and figure out the width and height that you need to be. You can also see that it covers whatever's behind it. But it does function. Like if you have a button behind it, the button will still function. You could click here if it was a button and it still would. We'll take this placeholder and I'll add an event to it. We'll make the text equal to something. Now we'll run this again. Now you can see when I hit this, we get this, and I'm over here on the blue, and it says something. And it also knows what you did last. So if I go up here, and now it's back in front. So what it does is it just kind of changes the display, but it's easy to override it. If you were to reset the display, it'll also ban it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to expand this box. So we'll change it to 200. And then we're also going to center it by making these two values 1 and 1. So this will be the centered X and centered Y. And we're going to leave everything else the same. So now when I hit show, it should cover more, and the text should be centered, and it is. So now we're going to change the STA variable to zero, which should be a crop image. So that means we need to come back to this blue and give it an image ID, which is zero. I haven't had good luck with this. We'll, we'll see if it happens to work in the video. So if I hit show, you can see that testing pops up in red, but there's no background, whatever. And when we set that STA to zero, it says it wants to use a crop image. And maybe I'm not sure how to do a crop image yet. If anyone does, put a comment in there and it could help somebody else. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to an image. So changing STA to a 2 now will display an image. And you can see I have the Cheap Controls logo show up. So testing is covering the logo. And even though I have the testing centered, the logo is not. So if you ha have a specific size space, you'd probably want to make the image fit that size. Now we're going to change the STA to 3. And what that does, this is the most interesting part that I found. What it does is it makes it transparent so there's no background. So if you wanted to do an overlay over an image or for a dial or there's lots of applications where you might want text but you might want a transparent and it be on a basic display, there's a way to make that happen. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make this go away because right now if I hit show it's going to be there and it's kind of always there unless we reset the display. We're going to use the hide button for that. And for this, we're going to keep all of the commands the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to put everything in the same spot, but we're going to overwrite the text with white. So really, we're executing the same command, but when I do show, it's testing. But I did make the background white in that, so watch what happens. It made everything go away, because it, it made that whole area go to white. And we're going to make the background here, we're going to set it to 3 so it's a transparent or no background. And I think we can leave the white in there. And there it works. But hopefully this comes from the video. But you can kind of see the outline of the red for the testing. But watch what happens if I keep hitting the hide button. 
starts to go away. So it's kind of interesting that it doesn't get it exactly right. Uh, maybe if you went with a font that was just slightly larger and overwrote it, then you could get it on the first pass. But it's just kind of interesting. I kind of like the fact that it leaves a little bit of a remnants there. So if you were doing some sort of a, a signal, like when I'm saying I'm scanning for the networks, it, it will leave that kind of in the background a little bit so you know that it went away, but you know that that message could pop up again when it scans again. Now we're going to run the XSTR command twice. So I'm going to have this show button or the show plus plus button over here and we're going to run it again. So for in this case we're going to have the show is going to say testing and then show plus plus is going to say controls in blue. And then the hide will just get rid of the testing. So when I hit the show we've got testing. When we hit the show plus plus, you can see that it just overwrites it. It doesn't erase what was there. But if I go hide, then it writes the testing in white. And then if I go show again, then it looks like it's just the controls. But we're going to go to the hide, and we're going to add this. So not only are we going to get rid of the testing, but we're going to get rid of the controls when we hit hide. We'll do show, controls, and hide, and it kind of gets rid of it. Especially if you keep hitting it, then it really goes away. There's one more way to, um, to get rid of everything, and that's to change this. We'll comment these out, because you'll be able to download this file up at Cheap Controls, so I'm going to leave the lines in there. And the command is rest, R-E-S-T, but really it's reset, and what it does is it should reset the display. So if I do the show and that, and have that mess down there, if I hit hide, it should go back to what it was before. And you can see that it does. The only problem with that is you are resetting the display, so um, all of your values that you would have in there, if you had number fields and things, would also be reset. So you'd have to store them in double EEPROM and refresh them or something like that. Um, it would get involved. But I just thought it was interesting that you could do that with the REST command. Just for a quick review, we have this XSTR command, and you can set the X and Y position, and then you set the width and height of it, and then you have the font ID, so you could have multiple fonts and choose the one that you want, and then the color of the font, and either the color of the background or the image number for the background, and then you set its position, whether you want it to be set right, left, top, bottom, or center, and then you can display how you want the background to display. And this was the reason for this video in a way, is I just love the fact that you can have a transparent background. And then you finish it with the text that you want to display. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.